Okay, um, I would like to give a very simple explanation of what the thesis statement of your term paper or your essay uh, ought to look like, what kind of um, sentence it's supposed to be. So I'm going to start by taking a look at two simple sentences. Here we go. All right, one of them is the purpose of this paper is to explain how to swim, and the other one is the way to swim is to kick with your feet and paddle with your hands. And only one of those is uh, really correctly um, what we would call a thesis statement. So which one is it? Go on. Go on. Which one is it? Da 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 da. Right. It's the second one. Well, or perhaps wrong. Maybe you got it wrong. If you got it right, you can just sort of tune out, tune out right now. You don't need to carry on, probably. But if you thought that it was the first one, then we need to talk about this a little bit. So here we go. Let's just think about what a thesis statement is. It's not an explanation of something you're going to do. It's not saying, I will do this, I will show you how to swim, or I will explain, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's a summary of your main idea. And another way of putting it is that your thesis statement is a summary of your conclusion. All right? It's where your arguments lead. It's everything is aiming to prove this particular point or to show this particular thing. All right? Um, not to show how to swim, because that's vague. It doesn't say anything. But to show that in order to swim, you kick with your feet and you, you uh, paddle with your hands. I mean, let's take a close look at those two sentences one more time. Take the first one, the purpose of this paper is to explain how to swim. Now, is that summarising an idea? Is it an explanation, rather, of something that the writer is going to do? OK? Is it something that uh, you could agree with or disagree with? And could people say, oh, no, 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 uh, that's not the purpose of this paper? Well, not really. You couldn't say that because you haven't read the paper yet. You, you, until, until the person tells you, you don't really know what the paper is going to do. Um, the person says it's going to explain how to swim, but so far they haven't really told you um, anything uh, concretely. So the sentence is an explanation of something the writer is going to do. We don't know what the writer is going to explain, so we can't really agree or disagree with the statement. So take a look at the second sentence. The way to swim is to kick with your feet and paddle with your hands. Well, that is a basic idea, isn't it? I mean, you could agree with it. Um, you could say, oh, yeah, 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 that's right. That's how you swim. Or you could disagree. I mean, I'm going to disagree right here. I'm going to say, no, no, no. It doesn't matter how much you kick with your feet or paddle with your hands. Uh, you still won't be able to swim unless you jump into the water first. OK, so I disagree with it. All right. Um, so it's that kind of statement that you could either agree with or disagree with. Uh, and it's also the sort of statement that people can say, well, well, prove it. If it's true, well, you know, prove it. What evidence have you got to prove it? So you say, OK, look, this is my thesis. This is the way to swim. You kick with your feet and you paddle with your hands. And, and my arguments that, that I feel back up uh, my thesis and which prove it or show that it's true. My first argument is, well, you know, we've done a few tests here and we've found that uh, people who don't kick with their feet and don't paddle with their hands, well, they just tend to drown. OK, they sink to the bottom and they drown. So uh, if they don't do it, then they, 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 they end up uh, drowning. OK, so that would be my first argument uh, for the way to swim being kicking with your feet and paddling with your hands. I might take a second argument and say, well, I watched the television, I watched the Olympic Games, and I saw all the swimmers there, and every single one of them kicked with their feet and paddled with their hands. There wasn't any one of them that didn't do that. So that's what people do when they swim. And these are highly successful swimmers because they're in the Olympic Games. So there you go, that proves it. All right. And I could take as a third argument, I could say, well, it is possible to swim just by kicking with your feet. It is possible to swim just by paddling with your hands. But people who only do one of these things don't really swim as well as people who do both of them. So optimally, swimming would consist of doing both of these things. All right. So that would be, you know, those would be my, my, that would be three arguments to support the thesis. All right. Now, when you write your thesis, when you're writing your term paper, think about it. Does your thesis correctly summarise the main idea of the paper? OK, it doesn't say I'm going to tell you how to do something, but it actually tells you, uh, you know, what it, what it is. So I'm going to explain uh, why, or um, I'm going to talk about what, or I'm going to discuss this, that or the other. Or is it actually going to summarise the meat 
the real concrete uh, conclusion of the paper? Is it something that can be agreed with or disagreed with? Could people say, well, prove it? And then you could say, well, I can prove it by this and this and this. I've got my arguments. If you can say yes to all of those questions, then, OK, you've got a correctly expressed thesis. It might still be wrong. I mean, there could be still things wrong with it. Um, basically, it might not be appropriate for other reasons. Uh, the two main reasons would be uh, that it uh, can't be demonstrated logically. A thesis must be something uh, that not only summarizes the argument of the paper, the main argument of the paper, but it, it, it's got to be something that can be demonstrated logically. And it has to be something that can be demonstrated logically in the amount of space that you've got available. It must not be a topic that's much too big to demonstrate. So let's take those two and break them down here. Um, the right kind of thesis. Now, uh, here you need to think that it needs to be something that can be expressed and demonstrated and shown in a logical kind of way. The students very often say, I will write about why William Shakespeare is popular, or something like that, or why Harry Potter is popular. Well, that's really a matter of taste, isn't it? Things are popular because people like them, and, and what they like or don't like is a matter of taste. And as they say in Latin, de gustibus non est disputandum. You can't argue about taste. We can't prove that Shakespeare is better than Hello Kitty. OK, I mean, it's just some people like Hello Kitty and some people like Shakespeare. You can't persuade people. You're not going to make somebody say, I agree, Shakespeare's not really so great. Hello Kitty is much better. Or the other way around. People like what they like. And that's that. So likes and dislikes are not open to logical argument. And we can't really argue about that at all. So that's why we can't argue effectively, really, usually, about why things are popular. I mean, things are popular because people like them. OK, maybe also because they're well marketed. But a paper that tries to explain uh, why the Harry Potter series was so popular, I mean, come on, it, it doesn't work because think about it. If you really knew why it was so popular, you, you could go ahead and do what she did and you could be what J.K. Rowling did and you could be rich and famous like her or I could. OK, we don't really know. I mean, we just know that, that people like something and that, 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 it, that it's been popular because a lot of people liked it. We can't prove, really, very much about it, usually. Um, it's not the sort of thing that's open to proof. So instead of trying to show why, it, why the series is so popular, it would probably be better to take something that, that can be more easily proved with evidence or disproved. You could uh, write about um, Harry Potter and it's, you know, how it... Um, relates to the class system, you might decide that it challenges the English class system, OK? Um, and that would be a thesis, and people could agree. They could say, yes, it does, or no, it doesn't. And you could say, well, what are your reasons for thinking that? So um, it may not be the best thesis in the world, but it's a possible thesis. It, 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 at least it has the right shape. It looks like a thesis. It's something that can be uh, shown and supported by logical argument. OK, so the next thing would be the right size of thesis. Getting something that's sort of not too big, not too small. Um, you know, trying to talk about why uh, Prince Charles's uh, former wife was murdered. Well, check on the internet. There are, there's, there, you're probably going to find a, a million pages or more written about this, and still nobody's been able to prove that she was murdered. And uh, the same would go about the debate about William Shakespeare was a Catholic. OK, maybe not so many pages, but still thousands and thousands of pages. And nobody can really say, well, I have proved conclusively that Shakespeare was a Catholic. So what are you really going to achieve in your 1,000 word paper, or even if it's a longer paper? What are you really going to achieve in that short space of time? A short paper on topics like these isn't really going to cover all the details. It'll just give a very superficial account. I might as well read what Wikipedia has to say about conspiracy theories about Diana or about Shakespeare being a Catholic, because in a thousand words, you're not really going to be able to say anything very much more than is already uh, easily available uh, on, on Wikipedia. And you're going to give a superficial treatment of the subject. If you're really interested in those subjects, you could pick up one aspect I mean, for example, the, the, the idea that the driver was drunk. Can we find out about that? And can you show the evidence for that? And can you show what part that might have played in the accident? 
Or if it's Shakespeare, well, I mean, it's still a bit of a big topic, but uh, maybe for a thousand words it might actually be a, a bit much. But um, you could write about um, one particular play, okay? At least that would cut it down um, considerably and talk about the Catholic references in that play. It's more beneficial to you to study a narrow topic deeply and uh, it's a, a way, way better deal for the, the, the person who's marking it, for Muggins here, for me, okay? Because I just don't really want to read another paper that just tells me exactly the same things that I can read on Wikipedia and, and that I think, yes, I've read this, I've read this before, students have told me this sort of thing before. Um, it's not really telling me anything new. It's not really going deeply into the topic. It's just saying the superficial facts that um, uh, people have... Uh, repeated so many times in the past.